Srimati Supriya Suleji. Thank you very much. I stand here to speak against a very long and tiresome budget, which we all heard. And even the, unfortunately, I don't know in what note has this government brought this budget. It was a tiresome exercise hearing the speech and this debate has been one of the longest debates which has maximum breaks, I think. We've been preparing for the last four days and finally we have an opportunity to speak on the budget. I would like to, I think the economic survey, the vision of the finance ministry seems to be a bit hazy. Because the economic survey says one thing and the budget outcome says something. The economic survey, where they have quoted, Kautalya says, the root of wealth is economic activity and its lack of bringing material distress. In the absence of fruitful economic activity, both current prospective and future growth are in danger of destruction. Now, when this is the one side of the vision of the economic survey, the entire budget seems to be, a, I think, a document which seemed like a vision of a party or a government. Because it is very interesting because first of all a budget normally what I understand is only for one year. Most of their commitments were about five years and ten years. And when the treasury bench spoke, it was very interesting. Because I think they are actually living in a bubble. Absolutely away from reality in a fairy tale world. Because most of the targets that they were committed to or what came from treasury benches were numbers which are absolutely unrealistic and unreal, giving the, physic, uh, the fiscal health of the situation. Actually, the budget has exposed the failings of this government when it comes to fiscal health. The fact is that the government seems to have run out of revenues completely when it really needed it the most. Talking about 5 trillion economy, the Treasury bench was talking about a 10 trillion dollar economy. I mean, I think especially coming from them, I just wanted to ask them one humble question. Is to achieve 5 trillion dollar economy, what is the growth rate is required and you all are talking about 10. We are barely not even crossing 5 with all the numbers that they are giving. It's absolutely worrisome for the commitments they are doing. They are very proud of the insolvency code. It's a very good thing. If the government is going to get NPAs going, people are going to pay, pay back. It's a wonderful thing. I'm really happy to hear that. We all supported it. And if it's going to be a fair and an equal marketplace, we support any such reforms which are in the interest of the economy and development of the state. But there was a word he used, velocity of resolution has really got up. I just want to like to ask the Honourable Minister, who is here, one humble question. That you are very proud of your insolvency code. There is a company called Alok Industries, which was taken a loan of 49,000 crores. They paid back 4,900 crores. So the haircut was of 90%. You can verify this. I am giving you all this information shake, shake. from the newspaper. Shake, shake. Then they want to do a bullet train, which is something which came about four times. The bullet train is in my state, sir. I want to ask this government that you want to do a bullet train, wonderful. Are you going to entirely pay for it? Because the land acquisition, when they were in power five years, nothing has happened. Instead of that, in the railway, where Dombivili, Kalyan, Thane, which is the maximum number of people who use their rail lines, you've really done nothing for it. So you are again in that fairy tale mode. It's like Cinderella. These things happen only in fairy tales. They don't happen in reality. So bullet train is like that. They keep committing about it. They have not even acquired one acre of land for it. And there is huge stuff. And there are seven people who die every day on Mumbai suburban railways. Imagine, sir, seven people die every day. There is not a mention of that. But the bullet train is there, which is again in their fairy tale mode. The Honourable Minister talked about capital expenditure, you know, the feel good factor. I don't know which, how they are feeling good because our markets reacted. The market crashed 1200 crores when we were sitting here, 1200 points when we were sitting here for 3 hours 47 minutes. After much recovery, it recovered, but it finally closed at minus 450. So from 1200 to 4, but it still closed at minus 450 points. So I don't know what full feel good factor this government is talking about. Another thing that they talked about, all the sectors are doing well. The Honourable uh, Minister of uh, Finance, uh, uh, Mr. Thakurji, talked about how well the economy is doing this morning. I was really happy to hear that. It's again the fairy tale mode. And they like to, they're living in a make-believe world because I don't see any of the, that really happening in reality. I come from a producer state. Maharashtra has 
probably the largest investments, especially the district that I come from. When, be it the telecom sector, be it the auto sector, the realty sector, all the core sectors, be it coal, are all in the negative. So I don't know where we are getting the data on the field, vis-a-vis -vis this data where this government is getting. He talked about banks. I was very happy that he said that the banks were doing exceptionally well. I take this opportunity and humbly request the Honorable Finance Minister of State that the Punjab Maharashtra Cooperative Bank is under a lot of distress. We have asked for help from the central government. Yes, I, it is a multi-state bank. I do understand it is partly a state subject, but the, uh, the Ministry of Finance from Maharashtra has written to them asking RBI to give a clarification and help us because it's not only a bank which is in Maharashtra, it's in six other states. So would the Honorable Minister in his reply give a clear-cut British because we are willing to help, but I think this is not about you versus us. It's about you and us helping the poor depositors of the PMC Bank in Maharashtra who really are under distress. And this is hard-earned money which people are losing and nobody is really at fault. Nor are you at fault, nor are we at fault. It's the system that was faulty which needed change. So I would urge and take this opportunity to ask him to give us some help. Talking about all the sectors that he was talking so well, be it Creda, being SIM, these are all agencies which work pan India for the auto sector, the telecom sector, all kind of sectors. Each one has reacted negatively. I'll give you little data, sir, to share with you. The GDP which this government has extended at 12% is not growing more than 8.5%. The fiscal deficit, 3.5% was expected, now is almost at 3.8, we don't know where it's going to go. The estimated net tax revenue was 1649582 crores, is actually now only at 1504587 crores. The disinvestment target, this is a very important target, sir. They are looking at selling LIC, Air India, God knows how many things. The disinvestment target is was at 1,5,000 crores. Their yield is only at 65,000. So they have not reached more than 60% anywhere. The government spending is despite the borrowing of 63,086 crores. They have reached only right now, it, was, it should have been 2786,379 crores. The gross, uh, the gross tax revenues, there is a huge lot. The numbers are 3 lakh crores. We'll have to verify what really the number is. I still like to quote Sri Arunji, who I remember clearly here. It's unfortunate that he's with us no more. Sir, he came up with the yes. FRBM Act. Now, what was the Some FRBM Act? Even. It was not just for the country, but it was even for the state. And it was the intent was exceptionally good of the government. And what was it for? It was to control deficit, have good fiscal def uh, discipline, and even limit the state so that nobody overspends, so there is no bankruptcy. and. The reason we don't, nobody needs to be bankrupt because all our social sector programs, be it healthcare, be it education, gets affected when the economy, the economy slows down. So in this, what has been done in the FRBM Act, I still remember Sri Arunji quoting, speaking from here. In 2014, he said that fiscal deficit has to stay be between not more than 3.2 and always lesser than 3.2. In your government, it has reached 3.8, it's always probably going to reach 4 and you're using the act. Now, why are you using this act? To bring it, because it, that commitment was 3.4. If you disagree, I'm happy to listen to you in your reply. And it would reassure us if that's not the case. I'll be more than happy to know that that's not the case. But the whole uh, debt structure looks really very, very worrisome. So one last point about the farmers. I have a lot of points, but I'll try and finish as soon as I can. So just two minutes. For the farmers, you talked about doubling incomes. Now in two years, how are you going to? The 16 pro, um, plans that you made is a wonderful plan. It's again the fairy tale moment. It sounds wonderful on paper, but it's not going to happen because that whole 16 measures were like a long, long laundry list. There was only wishes and intentions. And I'd like to highlight one point out of it. They talked about solar. The intention is exceptionally good. But in solar, just to bring to the notice of the Honorable Minister, 92% of solar modules come from China. Now this Make in India business, I don't know where it's headed, but 92% comes from China. The PV model part of the solar, 20% tax and you have capped imports. So imports are capped, 
the taxation has gone up, you have disrupted the whole thing, the policy has changed and that's the sentiment India is going, uh, going through this difficulty. The service tax now has become 18% and the goods tax 10%. So there's a gap of 8,000 crores of people who have already invested in the solar business. Now who is going to pay this 8,000? States cannot afford to pay it. You are not willing to pay it. So this is the sentiment of this country. There's continuous disruption of policies. And that's what the problem of this entire scheme of things is. How are you going to mobilize the finance? Who are the investors? Who are the start markets? How is this going to do? Another very good intention is zero budget, natural farming. Very good step. Very happy to have organic things. But where is the yield? Organic farm. Organic farm. Very wonderful thing. We all grew up eating organic farm. Can you just quickly tell us what this is? Two last very short points which I really need a clarification because I come from a producing state who is suffering because of the slabs of GST. Two big major mistakes they have made. GST, they made slabs, the same thing they are doing in taxation again. Multiple slabs, you put everybody in a flap. I don't know which chartered accountant's life has become serious. At least the one who studied with me are not sounding very happy with the situation. But the, the cess and the surcharge is such, so much cess is collected. How come we don't get it for education in our states? Because they'll say, oh, it's in a kitty. Then if your kitty is doing the same thing about Narega, my friend Kani Moliji talked about Na Narega earlier. Somebody said, oh, it is very demand-driven. Yes, it is a demand-driven program. But the labor ministry had recommended the increase. If your economy is doing well, you have so much money, your banks are doing well, then why don't you increase it to 375 rupees, which is the recommendation of yes. the Labour Department. Thank you, thank you, Supriya ji. So last, 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 only one last point. I, I won't go no, into last, this. <laughs> no, Some don't give it to me. I have objection to that. Just two state points, sir, because I come from a state which needs answers to this. The finance, the fifth finance, the fifteenth finance commission, Maharashtra has been deprived by 0.69 percent cut has come. Why? What is the reason? In the 14th commission, they said it will be population. Whichever person, whichever state manages population well, we will give them an incentive. What does the 15th finance commission say? It is density driven. So when we are controlling population, it is ghate ka danda ho gaya na. Ek baar aap kuch says again the disruption of this. 70 points, and we fit them all. So we should have not listened to all the recommendations. Thank you, thank you, madam. Last point. One, let just just two serious. Please, the very serious matter. The so last two points, one is between this says centered uh, uh, sponsored schemes. The state, like my state is 5% less for midday meal program and because of 13% cut on major because of this commission issues that my state is suffering. And GST, you all, you keep, I mean I saw Jain Sinaji speaking exceptionally well in GST. I'm so happy we are doing well in GST. Please give us our 15,000 crores. We will also yeah. say the same thing. My state has not got any of the monies which is that. Now they've given us little amount of money and now they're saying we will only give it in two uh, parts. So if the money surplus is sitting here, the banks are doing well, economy is doing well, whole fairy tale life is going lovely on that side of the nation. Please give it to thank this you, side of thank the nation you. also. I so just urge this government to wake up, sir. They have to target their disinvestments are not doing. The economy needs revival. You need to accelerate growth, look into the fiscal development, promote private investment and the sentiment of fear. I'm not saying fear only of speech, but there is a general sentiment in this country and don't blame it on the other country. Thank you. We Thank can you work very on much. ourselves. If you don't take disruptive decisions, Things can go well and if you can't do it, there are a lot of good people in this country who are happy to help you. I'm sure the sense of this house, in the larger interest of the nation, yes. we don't want a deformed thank you, thank economy. You. We will help you. Please take Sri, some suggestions. Sri